Hello, I'm Dr. Eugenia Chen, Senior Lecturer of Pure Mathematics at the University of Sheffield, and I love food. I also love maths. And I love putting the two things together, because why not put together two of the things that you love the most? Now, the funny thing is that maths turns out to be something that can explain a surprising number of things involving food. How great is that? For example, what about scones? I love scones with cream. But there's an argument that some unwise people sometimes have about scones, which is what's the best kind of cream to put on them? Now, I know it's perfectly obvious, and I'm sure you know this as well, that clotted cream is obviously better than whipped cream. But sometimes when you're having arguments with people, it's good to be able to come up with some maths to back up your argument, because who can argue with a piece of maths? So I thought to myself, hmm, how can I use maths to back up my argument that clotted cream is obviously better than whipped cream? So I thought, how about a formula for how much cream and jam should go on a scone? Of course, it depends how big your scone is. You could have an enormous scone like this one, or you could have a teeny weeny scone like this one. So I made scones of every possible size. And I thought about it, and I thought, well, they've got to be in proportion, because you can't have a scone that's really tiny and enormous this direction, because that would be ridiculous. So I got out my ruler. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the diameter of the scone, that's how far it is across like that, and see how much cream we need to go on each one. So this one is a kind of middling size of scone, not the really enormous one. This one has a diameter of about six centimetres. Now the thing is that when you make your scone with your cream and your jam, you don't want to make a giant mess, although I quite like making a giant mess. So you put your, you put your jam on, here's some jam, mm. you put your jam on and you want a good amount of jam, but you don't want to go all the way to the edge because then it might drip off. So you're going to lose a bit of space around the edge of your scone. And then you put your cream on top, and you're going to lose a bit more. Mmm, look at this. Dollop. Yum. So, you might remember the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. That's a scone, by the way. So you've got your scone, and then you've got your jam, and then you've got your cream in the middle. And so each time you go in, you lose a bit of your pi r squared. It's just like the fact that if you have a really small baguette compared with a really big baguette, the small one loses a lot more to the crust. You haven't got so much of that nice squidgy bit in the middle. Whereas this one, you've got loads of the squidgy bit in the middle. Mmm, a lot of the squidgy bit in the middle. So it's the same with your scone. You lose more of the scone around the outside when you have a really small scone. Um. And then there's the other question about whether it's actually going to fit in your mouth or not. Oh, that's good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now the thing is that I want a certain amount of cream on my scone. And I've lost some around the edge. So how about I just use a bigger scone? How about I use this scone? I'm going to cut it down the middle like that. Oh my goodness, look how big this scone is. This scone has a diameter of 10 centimetres. But imagine how much cream I'm going to have to put on there. I'm just going to put my jam on first. It's going to be an enormous amount of jam because I still need the same proportion of jam to the amount of scone that there is. So I'm going to put this amount of jam on. So much jam. So much jam. Yum. Now imagine that I try to put some whipped cream on instead. Look how fluffy the whipped cream is compared with the clotted cream, which basically you can hold the clotted cream upside down and it just stays in there because it's so thick. Whereas if I held this one upside down, I think I make a big mess. I won't do that. So if I try to pile this on, because it's so airy, I'm going to have to put so much on to get the right amount of cream for the scone but you know what's going to happen is it's just it's not going to fit in my mouth. And so I thought, 
how can I work out the maths behind whether this thing is actually going to fit in my mouth or not? And the answer is, if you work through these formulae, the pi r squared for each level of the scone, what you get for the thickness of your cream overall is r cubed over 8 r minus 1 squared. And if you work out what that is for all these different sizes of scone, you discover that for this size of scone, it's ridiculously huge. I won't fit in my mouth. Whereas for this one, you lose so much around the edge. Let's try this one, shall we? You lose so much around the edge that you end up having to pile a ridiculously huge quantity of cream on your scone so high that the cream is actually higher than the scone, which I think you'll agree is pretty ridiculous. So as a result, you can prove that with the whipped cream, it's completely impossible because it just won't fit in your mouth. Whereas with the clotted cream, mmm, as long as your scone isn't too big, between about here and here is a sensible size of scone, then I think you'll find that you have made the perfect cream tea. Yum!